to speak to you, Kim, and uh, we couldn't wait. Excuse the fun. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet oh, you. Yeah, you, too. you yeah. too. Great to talk to the first lady of house music, Kim. Real honor. Ladies. Real honor. Yeah. yeah, and I cut my thumb too. <laughs> so oh, nice. How did you do that? <laughs> I was trying to slice the courgette and I sliced my thumb instead. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh dear. Oh. You're not playing a piano anytime soon, are you? Uh, no, no guitar, no piano, no, none of that. So, oh. no, so are you know. touring at the moment? Are you I up? am, I am actually. Um, I'm, I'm, it's, it's just getting my head around all these dates. I know I'm going to be in Liverpool for a Valentine's Day event on the 17th oh. of um, February. So that right. weekend, that Valentine's weekend, the place is called S E Double N. And it's a fabulous, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. That's why I was like, is it sin or spin or whatever? But um, it's loads of young people, um, usually about 25 to 30 or 35. They they look so amazing. They come glammed up like the 70s, uh, Studio 54. So I'm there on the 17th. You can get tickets online at, um, I spelled oh, it. brilliant. Enn dot com. I I'll be at the Victoria and Albert Museum oh. uh, on the sixteenth of February yeah. to um, do a Voices of Gospel um, event. Myself, Bula, and the London Gospel Community Choir. Oh, that must um, be amazing! Wow. Oh, it's a lot. Oh, yeah. March is booked. I can't remember where I am. Yeah. I'm doing some Butlin shows in September. Wow. Uh, doing festivals across the summer, oh. uh, Newport and Southport and Bristol. So I should be somewhere near someone. <laughs> yeah, you've got so much so going on. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's a lot, and it just it just all comes in sometimes like whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, now we're uh, very excited, uh, Kim, to hear that you were on the Rediscovered album, uh, Moro Dirago's album. How did oh, that? Yes. How did that uh, come about, Kim? Uh, with with the rediscovered album, Morrow, he hunted me down. <laughs> <laughs> he did this was some years ago too. I think it was during the lockdown, actually, or yeah. just before lockdown. It's it's like a lot of things has happened since that lockdown. I've got a bit of fog memory um, yeah. from that. I think a lot of us do. Know, um, and but he he said, oh, "I want to do this project." Um, I know that a lot of artists, you know, from eighties, nineties early 2000s, whatever years, people record songs that don't get released. And sometimes you re have recorded a cover of someone that yeah. wasn't released. Um, did you have a cover of something? And I was like, oh, yeah. And I started, you know, digging through my little box and going, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got this, I've got that. And um, he came by with this. It was absolutely locked down. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember because he brought equipment with him <laughs> and this and that. <laughs> Because it's Can You house. Feel It, isn't it, Kim? Can You Feel It, the Jacksons song? Well, we ended up doing that, but it didn't start off with that. Oh. Ah, okay. No, 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 no. You're talking a process of two years before we even did Can You Feel It. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. But my cover, I did a blues version of Money, which was the Barrett Strong's record yeah. uh, written by Barrett Strong and Barry Gordy from Motown. So I did a blues cover of it. I switched it. All the way down to blues, like wow. I yeah. want money. That's, <laughs> That's what yeah. I want. And we did it really slow <laughs> and moody with blues guitars and all that. And it's oh, fabulous. Wow. So That's yeah, that it, great projects. Anita oh. and and Junior and I yeah. ended up doing the. Um, Can you feel it? Because he asked me about a a group song, and I I you know I used to sing that a lot live. It's one of my favorites. And um, he's like, that's a brilliant idea. Let's see yeah. if it'll yeah. work. Oh, so did you know them um, before? Did you know Sunita and Junior before that? I've known Sunita for <clears throat> years and I've known Junior even longer. Oh, oh that's nice. So it's like working with old friends, Kim, I'd imagine, to do that. Oh, it was beautiful. It's beautiful. Great people. Like I said, I've known Sunita since uh, uh, probably about 89, late 80s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and Junior. <laughs> about the same time actually when I came to the UK because I'm not from here it's probably yeah. your own <laughs> no, but you've lived here quite a while haven't you Kim now I, I've I've lived I've lived a lot of places but uh, I've been <laughs> in the UK 
um, for quite a while. Um, the UK did kidnap me. Um, <laughs> I used to commute back and forth from the States to the UK. And then yeah. the record company relocated me mm -hmm. um, to the UK. I always call it because everything was so strange. You had this big, colorful money, three different sizes. The plug in the wall was different. The refrigerator <laughs> was short, little. I couldn't get it. You no, know, bet. You bet. Walk <laughs> everywhere. But, <laughs> yeah, the food was different. And of course, I'm going back to like the 80s is where my reference yeah. is. Choose 80s we're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, everything has kind of caught up a bit now. You know, you've got mm -hmm. Chinese and Italian foods. Yeah. And, uh, very, very international. Yeah. 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 MZ. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you were the on, guy? a chef yourself, aren't you, Kim? Because you were on Celebrity Master Chef as well. You're in the semi final for yeah. that. How did you know that? <laughs> we did our research. Yeah. <laughs> that is very true. That was a. I loved being on that show. Oh. It was. It 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 was a bit challenging because you know those lights come on and you got a deadline to prepare yeah. a meal, and mm -hmm. people don't don't think about it. But you are quite you're under pressure, even though you've got your yeah. ingredients. You, yeah. There's no way you can cook it like you do at home, especially my special was Cajun food. Oh, lovely. Is, yeah, but th that seasoning and sitting for the yeah, season. Know, some sense. recipes, they season overnight. Yeah, so, so you know, it's not you something gotta, you can do in an hour, is it? There's nothing you can do in an hour, but we were throwing things together and making stuff happen. And I guess I did all right because I made it to... Like you said, the semifinals, and then, yeah. and then I was I also made it to uh, the part where you go and cook in a real restaurant. Mm. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. What was your signature dish, dish, Kim? What What's your favorite dish to cook? I'm trying to remember, I, it wasn't gumbo because that would take too long. I think it was something Creole though. It was either yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did like. Y'all call it spicy rice, but we call it dirty rice because it's a little bit dirtier than the spice. You add some, <laughs> I'm not giving my recipes away, but that and my signature dish, what was it? It was some type of steak that my mom used to cook, but it was Cajun. It was a Creole yeah, steak lovely. with the dirty rice with um uh some other of the Creole sides that my mom used to do. And it was quite a big dish and I had to cook it the day the day that we did the restaurant as well. Oh, wow. Oh, that's oh, I, oh, it didn't work. I, I was plum turkered out after, oh, after oh. Like four or five hours filming all day at a restaurant and cooking. Um, I think in that restaurant, I had to make gnocchi. Oh, oh yes. 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 Yeah. Italian. Yeah. Italian with the potato and the pasta. Yeah. Very difficult yeah. to do. Um, a difficult one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a difficult one. And my dish was ordered so many times. But... Um, but I, I, you know, I went through the challenge. I got through it. I did great. Yeah. Amazing and, thing to have experienced. Yeah. Like it was that. an amazing experience. Yeah. And we were like in the city, um, you know, so lots of people were coming for the lunch yeah. thing. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was amazing experience. Oh, what oh, were yeah. Greg and John like? Um, they were brilliant. They were they? fans. Oh, I didn't know they were Kim Mazzell fans. They were fans. Oh, fantastic. So did you do any singing while you were cooking, Kim? Probably a little Young Hearts, maybe a few yeah. little Jackson 5 songs, you know, probably. Talking of Young Hearts from Free, um, that was used recently on Dancing with the Stars, wasn't it? Your version. It was. And That's, you know what's, yeah. what's so beautiful about that is the person who brought it to my attention was Candy Stadden. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a legend. Oh. Yeah. What a legend. I what yeah. a lady. I, I I nearly cried when I saw her post it to me going, this beautiful version of oh. Young Hearts Run Free, sung brilliantly by the beautiful Kim oh. Mazelle and oh. all of this. And then Dancing with the Stars, what, a hundred million viewers? I know. Oh, wow. And Candy <laughs> Stadden saying, Kim. <laughs> I love what you did with the song, even all That's, these years later. Yeah, that must have been a heart heart moving performance. It, yeah. it really, it really was. And I, I was yeah. like, oh, she noticed, she liked it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, if we could go right back to um, wait, 
the 35th anniversary it is now, isn't it? Every 30 morning when I wake up, baby. Amazing. How, how did that collaboration come about with Robert Howard, Dr. Robert? Okay, with well, Robert, so we have to rewind to the end of 88, 89. I was fresh off the boat or plane, I should say. <laughs> House Music Underground was going to go above ground. And I think I was one of the first signings for a major artist to a major label. Well, I was an unknown artist to a major label for house music. So that hence First Lady of House, I got the first yeah. record you know, with a major label for it. And um, I think Robert was just on the scene, ears to the ground, hearing voices and uh, my record company, his label, his intuition. Yeah. And he had this song and I, I had not, heard of the blow monkeys i just didn't oh, really? but my sister uh, Kathy, had... she knew them and was a big fan so oh. i called and she said you better do that song girl that's yeah. the blow monkeys digging your singing <laughs> and all of this and i was like okay and we went to uh i think it was townhouse studios at the time in shepherd's bush and he played it and it was one of those things it was fabulous and, yeah. and you know it went straight into the top 40 top 10 we did top of the pops twice it was like the first um house pop record yeah, yeah. oh it was just, but, but you don't know all of those things when you're you know recording you don't realize don't realize that it's going to be that no that you, you just it's don't sometimes the record companies who are more you know like doing watching things they know these things so they may oh let's push that that'll be the first one or they may have a bit of a uh more of a plot and plan than you do you just yeah. you know, singing it's uh, lucky enough turning enough. up at the shows <laughs> <laughs> we've been lucky enough to meet dr roberts as well isn't he talking he's very tall isn't he he's very tall and he's very <laughs> handsome and he's a he lovely is. Man. he's lovely he's really lovely, lovely. lovely. And, and his family his wife, his children, just beautiful people. And um, it's good when you meet good people when you're in a, a new country um, and you don't understand anything. <laughs> they take you under their wing a bit when you're... They did, they did, and a few other people. But I went to his for, like, dinners. Um, we went out for, like, a Sunday lunch, like the typical oh, wow. Sunday lunch, like... Yeah. In, you know, at the pub, not just oh. 88, 89. I was like, what's <laughs> going on? You know, with the big, you know, like fire in the side with the wood yeah. dogs and, and the dogs. Everything was this, oh, just so on awesome. a brand for Britain. English. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I think I mentioned to you before that I was actually in the Top of the Pops audience when you performed. If I can share my screen really quickly, see if this is going to work. That would be amazing. Get out of here. I'm in the red. I'm just going to play it. And Kim Mizell playing live on Top of the Pops. Check this out. Uh, That's the second time. <laughs> yeah, that's the second time we oh, were on it? Top of the Pops. Yeah, the first time I think we were at we were in top 20. And I see that's number 10. And then we kept climbing up. So yeah, that's the second time. The first time I wore leopard. So oh, wow. that's the second yeah, time. Isn't that fantastic? Look at you. So it's so nice to see you again after all this time. Yeah. That is absolutely I'm really like, what? <laughs> it was like smoke and mirrors, wasn't it? Top of the pops. It was a lot smaller than it looked on TV because it looked like a huge studio. Yeah, but it was actually yeah. quite small, wasn't it? And the audience yeah. are moved around to the different stages, aren't they? So you watch one, and then they just move the same crowd over to the yeah, next. Yeah, they just move you to the other side. Yeah, I loved going to do top of the pops. Oh, soul to soul as well, um, Kim. Yes, 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 yes. Soul to soul. I was just speaking to Jazzy B today. Oh, oh memory so stuff. Funny, I love Jesse. So cool, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, it's just it was just such a an amazing time period where things were rave underground, but also things were 
above ground, if you want to say too, because mm-hmm. you had shows like Top of the Pop, shows like um The Word. Yeah, um, Terry Christian. Yeah, yeah. And the Big Mouth, me and my Big Mouth or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was so many di- Terry Wogan show. Oh. Yeah. Um, which well, it was I buzzing. It was show. buzzing then, wasn't it? Everything it was, was just buzzing. Uh, it well. was really buzzing. And I guess it's buzzing too now for this new generation in their own genres. They've got their places that they're going to, but they're yeah. just a little bit too caught up with selfies. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we were lucky there were no selfies back in the day, you know, that captured us in all of our glory, you know, <laughs> and doing what we were yeah. doing. But I think a lot of that stuff would not have even happened had there been selfies because back mm. then part of the reason why you were invited somewhere or at, at a VIP thing or under the cover, whatever you want to call it, is because you weren't bringing a camera in there. Yeah, exactly. The people were still doing sensational stories in the yeah. 80s and 90s, but they had to be really dodgy to bring in a camera and take pictures oh, of definitely. Uh, yeah, of whatever, whatever. whether you were just dancing or having a drink and then it wanted to be exploited some other kind of way. If you were that kind of person, you weren't invited in. No, to, that's it. Yeah. And also, you know, were only released sort of, you know, close to the day. So they didn't want that sort of, they didn't want Absolutely. people snooping around. And, Absolutely. You know. Definitely. That's the word. We didn't want yeah. people snooping around. <laughs> and you were able to let your young heart run free. Yeah. I remember I, I met um Jack Jackie Onassis. Oh, oh yes. I met Jackie Onassis in wow. London in Browns. Did you? Which, which was a members only <laughs> club. And I was just like, do not let your mouth hang wide open. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> it could hang in your mind. It could be like, and, yeah. I was like and, Jackie, and it was, and she was just coming in on her downtime, dressed in some Gloria Vanderbilt jeans. Oh, of course. Yeah, that was all the rage. The wearing the perfume, Beverly Hills, the yellow. Yeah, and, and, and she was just relaxed, just in the, you know, uh, little cargo top and, you know, yeah. just going in to see, to sit down, talk yeah. to someone, maybe have a cocktail. Yeah. But it was just that private that mm-hmm. um, that you could go. Nobody would be in there with a camera because no. it wasn't loud yeah. and there was no phones, you know. No. So it was just a beautiful time. Going back on all the people you've worked with, Kim, you've also uh, worked with Mick Jagger as well, haven't you? He had tea in your house, didn't he? You're telling my whole life story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and he was a gentleman too, and he and he's given me, you know, public credit, um, yeah. quite a lot. You know, like on some of his records, he's written my name on there, and um, yeah, he, he yeah, I, I made him a cup of tea. I did it. I, I I did the milk first. I was like, are you a milk first or milk after? You know, some people, that's some British thing. People don't yes. understand. Like, but- no, there's two different types of people. Some milk first. Some milk. I'm the milk after. Milk after. Milk after. <laughs> but and which one are you, Sue? Milk after. And, and Leah, you're milk after too. Oh, yeah. oh you're milk after tea too. Yeah. yeah I, I saw something Beverly Knight was doing, and she was doing the milk after as well. So I, was uh, like, that's it. I like to get the color just right. You know, that's, if you don't that's what she tea, said. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, and then it, you might have too much tea, and then it's too milky. <laughs> Did Mick Jagger have his with brown sugar by any chance, Kim? Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. <laughs> now you're just Please being now. creepy. <laughs> That's funny. That's a good question. I'll save that for the book. I love a pun. I love a pun. So we read somewhere that you grew up on the same street as the Jackson family. Is that correct? I grew up in the, in the same town. I grew up in Gary, right. Indiana, right. from the same hometown. And yeah, I mean, I remember watching them like early on um, on the block because there was a record company on our block. And I remember watching them on the block. I remember watching them, you know, in the newspapers and hearing them on the radio. And then the next thing you knew, they were in the TV. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So as a little girl, I'm like, how did they get in the tv and i'm thinking <laughs> to myself i can get in the tv yeah. <laughs> very inspiring and michael just and it uh, perfectionist mm. genius yeah. um 
gentle, just a kind soul. Yeah, I mean, the music industry, is, you know, it, it was a sad day to lose Michael Jackson, wasn't it? It hasn't recovered, you know, since that day. And uh, there's been some greats that we've lost over the years, haven't there? You know, yeah, I just I cried like a baby. I remember a friend of mine, he used to be my um, personal assistant. I remember the day he called me and I was like, no. And I hung up the phone and started running around the room screaming and uh and then he called me back. He was like, are you all right? I'm coming over. I was like, yeah, because no, I'm not all right. And I can't believe this. And it wasn't, we didn't have like internet kind of stuff then either, where you could just no. put it on, uh, you know, something and check if it's true yeah. or, you know, da, 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 da. Because I was like, where did he hear that from? And, you know. It was shocking, oh. shocking, absolutely. Uh, going back to projects that you've got at the moment, Kim, um, what, anything else lined up for the near future? We know you're touring. You've got a lot of tours going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just that for the moment. There may be a few things I'm thinking about, but I'm not talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we'll, we'll look out for them, Kim. Yeah. yeah but there's a few things going on. It's just lovely to meet you, ladies, because I see Choose 80s a lot on my post. And things oh. like that. And I was like, well, who's choose 80s? You know, <laughs> and it's lovely to know that you ladies have been in journalism and, you know, yeah. working and following the music, that you're real fans. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we go back, we, we met on newspapers. We both worked on newspapers together. So, and we just shared this love for music and, and that time, you know, it was so ph phenomenal that time. As, as you say, there was a freedom and an enjoyment and an unparalleled sort of variety of music wasn't there back then so um, absolutely absolutely um, such a big variety and so many people genres. mixing together We're celebrating 35 years of weight and um amazing brilliant and that's really amazing and uh, and I look forward to maybe doing something with Dr. Robert we did work together doing a live show maybe a few years ago right before COVID and he called me on to be a special guest so maybe there's something else out there where I'll oh we hope so stage. I'll yeah, just we, pop in on stage. You'll be like, oh, shit. Well, actually, we're going to see, see him yes. next month. We're interviewing him and we're seeing him play in Hartford, in Hertfordshire. Yeah, so yeah. we'll say hello from you, oh, shall we? we? Tell him I love him and I will always love him. Oh, and I, I appreciate him and the band. The band has always been a great band. They're so soulful. They're oh, really they're good. phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you, Kim. Like you, Kim. Thank you so oh. much for your time. And, and thank you for all the pleasure you've given us over the years. Um, thank you so much. Like... You're more than welcome. I thought I'd sparkle for you. Oh, <laughs> you certainly did. <laughs> day. Oh, uh, have, the, have the gigs go well next next week, isn't it? Next week. It's next week. Yeah. Yeah, next yeah, week. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll see you guys Liverpool, Stockport, New Newport, Um. Oh, we're all over the globe, Liverpool, yeah, and London. So come and see me. Oh, oh we will. Oh, oh, thank you. Thanks all so the much. best.